Welcome back to another episode of Automotive Insight. Today we have a 2012 Mazda CX-9. Customer states the battery light is on. So we think the alternator is faulty. Let's get into it. We got our, we had to jump start the vehicle. As you can tell with many other warning lights, our battery light is on. So let's check our battery voltage and see what the alternator is doing. So we had to jump start the vehicle. Our jump box has a voltmeter on it. It is running at about 12 volts. So that shows that the alternator is not charging. So let's do a couple other quick checks just to verify that there's no other issues. All right, so we're going to go to the alternator. Um, also, maybe one simple check with the battery light being on. Just make sure your serpentine belt is there. That is a possibility. Ours is there, and now we're going to go to the alternator. First, we're going to check the B-plus terminal to make sure the main fuse hasn't blown. That's good. And then we're going to check on the control side. Yeah, we've already disconnected it. Yeah, we've already disconnected it. And without getting into specifics, I usually at least look for some kind of ground and also a power. We've got a power. We've got some kind of signal and some kind of signal there. So that's good enough for me to determine the alternator is bad it is slightly covered in oil which uh, the car's got 220,000 miles so it's got leaks um, oil does damage it and it could also just be wore out so first thing you want to do is just go ahead and disconnect your negative battery cable remove your right front wheel all right we're going to remove uh, the plastic clips to hold this little uh, liner in. Usually you strip out these plastic things. This one actually came out. We've been trying to take the serpentine belt off. This is the serpentine belt tensioner. On the other side here is a 3 8 cutout. There's not any room to get a ratchet. Uh, even our, our serpentine belt toolkit is too wide, so there is a there is a kit that's just a flat bar with a 3 8 on it that would fit in there. But also our tensioner is seized, so we're gonna we're gonna remove the tensioner. We could cut our belt to get it off, but we're gonna try to uh, save the belt. So we're gonna remove the three the three bolts that holds the tensioner on. They are eight millimeters. Uh, another strategy to try to get that uh, tensioner off, assuming yours is fine, is uh, since it's so tight in between here and here, uh, you can take an adjustable wrench and stick it like that on it and push it, and you will be the the tensioner will need to go like this to to get it loose. Um, that was what we were trying initially. We're going to demonstrate how the tensioner is supposed to work. Um, this is a brand new one. The other one was locked up. And the only way we were able to get it with the tools we have is with a, an adjustable wrench. You can put it on there, and then now you can move the tensioner. This aftermarket design does have a lock pin feature. Um, we did lock it, installing it, made installing the new belt a lot easier. All right, so we're going to we're going to attempt. Uh, to get the alternator out by lifting the engine. We're going to uh, remove the three uh, passenger side motor mount bolts. They're 17 millimeters. All right, we already left our, our control connector disconnected from testing. Now we're going to work on removing our B-plus terminal, it's a 12 millimeter. All right, we're going to work on our upper uh, alternator mounting bolt. It is a 14 millimeter. I'm using a 3 8 ratchet with a deep 14 millimeter.
So here we're going to work on taking off the lower mounting bolt. It is a 14 millimeter. Um, it was a, a little tight. I did have to, the, the ratchet did keep slipping off, so I used a pry bar to kind of push it onto the bolt. Um, I didn't have to take the bolt all the way out, um, but I did have to unbolt it all the way from the alternator. The bolt did stay in the car uh, just because the alternator is slotted. And that does allow for um, easy, <clears throat> makes the installation a lot easier. All right, we got our engine jacked up. Uh, we got a, um, a jack under the oil pan. Um, you got to be cautious of that. It's aluminum. You can break the pan. Because uh, we're going to try to shift the motor back. We're going to try to shift the motor back. Um, and then I'm going to take the... There's four uh, 14 millimeter bolts where the mount is bolted to the engine. That way I can keep the engine level and shift it back so we can see if we can sneak the alternator out. Here she blows. The alternator's in there like this, and I pulled straight up on it so it got free from the bolt. We had to loosen the lower bolt all the way, but we didn't have to take it out because it's slotted. So you move it from this side here, and then the bolt is still in the block. So when we go back in with it, we'll hook the alternator on it, and helps to kind of get it back in place. All right, so on the new alternators, I like to uh, push the, I guess, a little slide nut out as far as I can. That way it, you're not having to fight and pry it to get back on the bracket. Be careful about just putting it on the edge and hitting it right here, because you can break the ear off of the alternator. Alright, the best way to get this one is is to throw it up and throw it in as fast as you can because this was every bit of twisting and pulling to get it out. All right, so I've got the alternator in place. I've got the upper mount, the, uh, the upper bolt started, and I want to put uh, the mount back on. That way, I can raise the vehicle up and uh, uh, get the the lower one started. Uh, so we're not trying to fight anything after it's clamped down. All right, we'll work on tightening our, our lower alternator bolt. Okay, we're going to work on uh, tightening the upper alternator bolt. That one wasn't as long as the other one. That's what she said. <laughs> He 
anyway, uh, put your uh, this uh, inner plastic piece on. All right, well, that wraps up another one. This is not the easiest to do. Uh, it did require a second hand. Um, it is a tight fit, but um, it could be done on the ground with some jacks and jack stands. Um, we did run into a little extra issue, but it's not, not the worst alternator to do. Uh, so, well, if you like what you saw today, you know, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. This does not need to be in the video at all, anywhere, even at the end of it. Jump on!